So, when you look into my eyes, do you see pain or passion? And I'm only asking, because when you look at me, my only hope is that you can see both. Right here, in between these eyelashes. Because I know that sometimes I lash out in my pain. But thank God that there is a God who took our lashes and made them his lashes. Because he hates seeing us hurt ourselves and each other more than you or I could ever imagine. <laughs> so between me and you, it's been him using all of my pain to form the very intricacies of all of this passion. In my hurt, I screamed out SOS, and then God took it and added it to my pain. To understand what I mean, you gotta look at those letters. Time and time again, I read through his love letters, and then his red letters start speaking to my screwed up and scrambled up life, and so now he's turning my pain into his painting. That's the letter T being added to all of my pain, which means that the blood of the passion of the Christ are the colors running through these dry bones and pale veins. I don't really care whether the world sees a colorful person or just another colored boy with a black heart and blue pain. His red blood been covering me, so the only freedom that's even worth mentioning in America is growing up being able to freely call upon his name. The cross he died on looks like that lowercase t. So therefore, in our case, Jesus lowered himself beneath the God that he is to come and save you and me. And that T wasn't the end of his reign. He came down here to kill death and give an L to the word pain. That's a win for the loss. His love is the only L I'm taking. I want to lose myself in his love because to make it plain, his plan was to place himself into our pain. The devil want us to focus on the I in our pain. He want us to focus on self and change I into a W. But he don't want to see us win. He want to make us his pawn. If you ain't passionate about Jesus, then it's because your heart still ain't yet cried out SOS. When you really get down on your knees like you've been in need and you ask for his help, then he adds SOS to your pain. And that's what turns into passion. And don't get me wrong. This life still hurts, but what you got to understand is that Jesus didn't come down here to take away our sorrows. He came to be the one and only true God to come and look right into the eyes of our pain. He came to come and show us compassion. He sees where you hurt. And when I look into everybody's eyes, I just see people trying to hide behind their pupils instead of letting God cover us. We try to cover up our continents, but God is constantly trying to remind us that we don't have to be strong. We just have to be willing to let him work through us. We can try to cover up, but no matter what, he still sees right through us. The world got us blinded. If the eyes are the windows to our souls, our pain is a vertical blind. The son of God is waiting on the horizon to come and cross our hearts and open our eyes. But first, we got to be willing to let the sun shine through us. God wants to unblind us. We colorblind and see now. What I mean is that we think that we can see now just because we got older. But inwardly, we still the same babies because we blame our pain on the world around us instead of realizing that God very intentionally left pain down here with his babies in order to help us grow up into maturity. So when you look into my eyes, I hope that you see yourself. My pain is a reflection of how much being in this world is hurting me. But because I believe that I'm alive to be a reflection of God's glory, my tears only spell SOS and my heart is only hurting because sometimes I don't know how to help others see what it is that I see. My passion is such a beautiful burden because it's both building and killing me. It hurts for me to see through these eyes people who are suffering through the same pain. But instead of getting along with God and crying out for Jesus' name, we chase after our own reflections. We say that we need to spend more time loving ourselves. But what we need is more time looking eye to eye with the same God who took his own life and let us kill him because of our suicidal vanity. When you look into my eyes, I hope you see the Holy Spirit helping me kill myself slowly.
Jesus died on that tee to ask us to let him touch our insanity. I used to talk to myself trying to encourage myself because I felt like I didn't have nobody around me to see into my heart well enough to know how to care for me and console me. I was just a lost and broken soul, wanting somebody to look into my eyes and know me, to maybe hold me. But now I don't blame nobody but me because God taught me that while I was focusing on myself, what I couldn't see is that the only reason why they couldn't come to encourage me is because they themselves were hurting. And instead of dying to ourselves, our pain prompts us to try and comfort and conceal our own misery. Which means that it took God teaching me that I don't need to love myself because even my self-loathing pain makes me do it naturally. The hardest thing for us to learn as human beings is how to see past ourselves and realize that living to comfort others is the only way to truly ever feel any differently. I've never had a suicidal thought in my life. And ever since I let God start turning my pain into a painting, I've learned that my deepest hurts are the hues that he's used to heal the hearts of some of the people around me who don't understand that until we get desperately passionate about Jesus, then we will always be trying to numb our pain with everything except for confiding in him and finding confidence in the humility of resting our eyes on his feet. So when you look into my eyes, all I pray is that even when they're red, all you see is the tears of the blood that he shed. And yes, if you're watching this asking, then I'm hurting. But please understand that God's peace came because I desperately admitted to him that I wasn't happy. And he said that those of us who love this life or go through this world with this pretentiously sophisticated smile are either too proud or too lost to know to ask for his peace. So instead of SOS, we live life writing LOLs, knowing that we're only laughing out loud to cover up the cry that our heart can't speak. I always wondered why both joy and peace are fruits of his spirit. And he said to me that his peace is something that we need because in a world filled with so much pain, horrific destruction and tragedy, it is something crazy about a person who believes that we are in this world to be happy more than to suffer until God can make us holy. His joy isn't supposed to come from this life. It's supposed to come from knowing that this is not our life because the joy to come when Jesus comes back is the only picture I want you to see when you look into my eyes. I want to be a reflection of his glory. I've surrendered but sometimes it still feels like I suffer more than when I didn't worry about telling his story. He said that it's only because once he starts allowing us to see into ourselves, then we begin to realize that when we look into the mirror at our own eyes, we're looking at the only person who can keep us out of heaven. Only you can keep you out of heaven by not crying, Jesus, I need you, SOS. While we're looking out into the world, trying to find where our pain is coming from, looking through all this mess. Once you start fighting with yourself to see past yourself, then you realize that the devil is real. But even more so, you begin to see that your own pride will always be your own worst enemy because we're taught to be afraid to be weak, even though Jesus says he only works through the meek. So when you look into my eyes and they look watery, just know that I've been battling with myself through the puddles of all of this pain, trying to keep this passionate fire lit. Because when Jesus comes back with eyes that are fiery, I want him to just look at me and see what nobody else could ever see. I want to stare into his eyes and hear him say that he's proud of me because I wasn't scared to be a man who exposed my own vulnerabilities because I always trusted in him to be protecting me. Right now, the glassy, Pain in my gaze only serves as a reflection of being planted on a broken earth. But my heart is staring into the heavens crying because I am yet to truly be with the one who saved me. Every day I'm crying out SOS and I cross my heart, hope to live this life dying as Christ. Because when you look in my eyes, I don't want you to see pain or pupils. I want you to see a reflection of paradise. Because my body is down here, but my heart, soul, and mind is focusing on helping others see that our eyes need to be set on being with Jesus in the afterlife. Now, whether you think I'm wrong or right, 
My only prayer is that as you self-reflect, you begin to ask yourself on that final day, when your eyes finally shut, where will you wake up?